Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Capacity Grants Budget Pilot Training. This is for extension and research recipients. So the objectives for the, the training today on continued capacity budget pilot for FY 2021 is where to locate resources, do a review of a budget form, which is an SF-424 and instructions, and then a demonstration of available budget and budget justification samples. So a little bit of an overview. Uh, NIFA did start the capacity budget pilot in FY 2020. And the decision was made to continue the pilot submission for the capacity budgets in FY 2021 for Smith Lever, both patch programs, both 1890 Extension and Research, RREA, and McIntyre Sinus. Those are the same programs uh, as what were part of the, the budget pilot in FY 2020 as well. So in FY 2020, there were about 25 universities that volunteered to do the budget pilot. There were about 11 1862s, 10 1890s, and two insular areas. So this year we've had about 49 different universities uh, that have expressed interest in participating for FY 2021 since we are continuing this budget pilot. Uh, we do hope that everyone does submit a budget. Um, you can submit for all of your programs if they are on the list. Um, we just, you know, obviously you'll need to fill out just one SF424A per program. So um, thank you again for your interest, and we are very appreciative, and I hope this is helpful. So what form will NIFA be requiring for capacity budgets? That is going to be the same as last year. It's the standard form SF-424 for non-construction programs. So it's a 424A. So where do you find this form? Grants.gov. So that optional form, again, is available for the, the programs indicated earlier. And then there is also more information on the capacity grant application guide, um, and that can be found once you're in grants.gov. You go into your preview opportunities, and there is a button that says download instructions. I'll show you a, a screenshot of what that looks like here in just a second. Then there's also the NIFA website that has a capacity budget pilot resources page. And on that page, it's going to have FAQs. It'll have sample budgets annotated sample budgets, as well as budget justification samples, and that will be for both extension and research. There are a few differences. So the NIFA grants.gov application guide, this is going to be what it looks like on the first page. And then if you need to go straight to the budget pilot information, that starts on page 42. Then the capacity budget pilot resources webpage on the NIFA site. It's going to look like this. It's going to have the formula grant forms at USDA.gov email address for any additional information. And then it's going to have the grants.gov website on here as well. And then it has the resources. So we have an FAQ. And then we have the, the, the sample budget, an annotated budget, and a budget justification for both the um, research and extension programs. And then when you scroll down, these are the actual attachments here in PDFs. So populating the budget, the 424A. Again, only list one program per SF-424A. The budget information is for the upcoming fiscal year. However, the object category amounts encompass the entire period of performance. So that's five years for Smith Lever and then two years for the remaining programs. So section A, which is page one of the SF-424A, you would first populate the uh, capacity program name. So on this one, we have Smith Lever 3B and C. The next one would be the CFDA or the Catalog of Federal Domestic Assistance Number. Um, I will say this did change about two years ago. So if you do have any question on what your CFDA is, in case it did change, I would recommend going to the NIFA website and you could just put in a CFDA or Catalog of Federal Domestic Assistance in that search box and it'll pull up a document where you can very easily see 
uh, what the CFDA number is for your program. Then the next one is the estimated unobligated funds. This is the federal funds carryover and the matching funds carryover. This is not really required this year, but if you do have that information, you can certainly populate that. The next part is the part that is required. This is going to be the federal and non-federal funding. This is going to come from the Appendix A, which uh, most of the times is part of your RFA, usually at the, at the back of it. Um, so make sure you're populating the federal amount from the Appendix A. And then if you do have matching requirement, the matching amount from the Appendix A as well. So this is the total of all four of these. I think that it automatically totals for you. Um, if it does not, uh, then, you know, it's just these four totaled and that's what will go in G. So section B, which is page two of the SF44A, um, keep in mind that only federal funds should be included on the in these object class category amounts. So for personnel, it's the total budget for salaries. Fringe, use your rate, so the university rate. Travel is going to be estimated travel. Equipment, uh, keep in mind that additional information will be required if the amount is over 5,000 per unit. And I will uh, talk about that a little bit more later. Supplies is an estimated amount. Contractual sub awards or sub grants and contracts. Construction, if it's allowable for your program. Other would be other direct cost, um, something like rent or leased equipment. And then indirect charges is going to be zero because those are not allowable underneath the capacity grant programs. Then there is a line seven. So if applicable, you would enter your estimated amount of program income um, that would be generated during the period of performance. We do not see this a lot, um, but if it does um, happen with your program, I did indicate some uh, CFRs right here. Just so you can go and, and read on it and then see if that's something you need to populate. So a few general tips. The amount on Section A, E1, federal, should match the amount on Section B, K, totals. So on that first page where you indicate the federal amount from the Appendix A, that should match the second page totals of all of the categories because, again, that is just the federal amount that goes in those category slots. Uh, make sure to enter the amounts for the entire period of performance. And if you don't have any planned expenditures for a particular category, go ahead and just enter a zero. The last page, which is section, section three, page three. Um, so when match is required, you'll need to enter the match amounts um, on the applicant, state, or other sources. Uh, for this, we normally only see that in the state. So you would put your matching amount in the state. Um, if for some reason they, it is coming from you as the applicant or other sources, the, the amounts would go in those spots. Um, the explanation for the uses of the match, that's gonna be included in the budget justification. And um, if you do submit this budget and budget justification, you do not need to also submit the required source of match documentation. So normally one of the requirements is a document on letterhead signed by an authorized representative from your university that indicates we are going to meet this match and this is where it is coming from. Um, so if you do submit a budget and budget justification and indicate the, the match in those, we do not also need an additional source of match document. So sections D and E, um, that's kind of the middle of page three. Those are um, not required information for NIFA. Section F, that's going to be at the very bottom of the SF-424 on page three. So line 21 is um, we will need to explain the amounts listed in other. So if you'll recall, I think one of the last um, object categories in the um, actual page two where you have the object categories, there was an other, it was like rent or leased equipment. So you would just kind of indicate in here what encompasses that amount in the other category. 
Uh, line 22, that would just be a zero because indirect charges are not allowable under the capacity programs. Line 23, that's going to be if, if for some reason you um, are getting funding for your matching, some matching funds from other sources, if it's not the state, um, that would need to be indicated here in the, in the remarks. Where is that money coming from, the matching? Creating the budget justification. So this is kind of just what it sounds like. It's, it's justifying your budget. Um, just kind of showing you again, this is um, a sample of uh, research and extension. Those are available to you in PDF on our website. So budget justification, this describes the categories of planned expenditures. Uh, justifications will be at the aggregate or program level for award budget categories and not at project level. Uh, try and follow the same order as the budget. So um, starts with carryover funds and then it goes, if, if applicable, and then it goes to personnel and then fringe. So just make sure you're, you're following the same order as the budget. Um, remember only one file for budget justification may be attached in grants.gov and it must be in a PDF format and it is required. The non-federal share funding it should be indicated in this budget, budget justification. It'll be at the end. Um, and this takes the place again of that required matching funds document. Be included. So for personnel and the estimate aggregate amount spent. So include a listing of the positions with their salaries and a brief description. Do not list employee names. For fringe benefits, again, just include the university fringe rate at the amount charged to the award. Travel, estimate aggregate amounts required for travel and anticipated trips. Equipment, if it is over 5,000 per unit, the same information that is currently required um, with our current prior approval process is the same you would use with the application. So if required documents are received with the application, then you would not be would not need to submit a prior approval at a future date. So we, we really do, um, we really would like you to submit any equipment prior approvals with your application if you already know that you are going to have some equipment purchases within your performance period then go ahead and submit that information along with the application. It kind of saves you saves you some, some time down the road um, and not having to submit those throughout the year. Um, you will get a decision with your application at the time of application. The supplies would be a brief description of the supplies budgeted. Um, I put some CFR sections in that one, as well as the one above for equipment, just to kind of help you to determine if it is considered equipment or if it's considered supplies. Contractual, the estimate funds to be spent for contractual costs, and that's on contracts or subgrants. And if you, if it's known, identify the subawardees as well. Construction. The description of the construction or renovation activities and how that benefits your program. Please keep in mind prior approval may be required and that this is not an allowable expense for all programs. Other, describe other direct costs that do not fit into categories described above. So anything that you put in that other category like uh, rent or leased equipment, etc. Then match, that is gonna be the, dog, the, the bottom of your document. Um, describe your sources of match as well as your planned match expenditures. So if your source of match is from the state, you would indicate it's from the state. And if you're maybe planning on using those matching funds to pay for salaries, you would indicate that there in the, in the narrative. How will revisions to SF-424A be handled? Again, these figures are best estimates, kind of like tools for planning purposes. Um, it's not expected that the subawardees will be known. However, the scope and categories of their work should be described. 
And revised budgets will only be required if there is a significantly um, changed amount from the initial submission. Um, also, if there is a matching waiver request, request that comes in after the application. And those revised budgets will be emailed to formula grant forms at USDA.gov for review and approval. So that concludes the training. Um, if you have any general feedback or any questions, feel free to reach out to us at formulagrantforms at usda.gov. This is the same email box that we have been sending all of the other FY21 budget pilot emails from. So we did not change any of that. Um, and uh, this is being recorded. So once I've had a chance to process it and get that YouTube link for you. Uh, I will certainly send that out to anyone that was invited here to the, the presentation. So thank you everyone.